BioBalance HealthCast, episode 127, The Importance of a Good Night's Rest. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We did a podcast almost a year ago on sleep. And since then, we've both been sort of tracking it because you had a, a sleep test. Mm-hmm. I have had a sleep test. And there's been a lot of new research that's come out in the last year or so about sleep mm-hmm. and the, the interactive yes. web uh, of ingredients and sleep being one of the main mm-hmm. ingredients that affects people's health. Right. And so it's, today it's we're, we're going to, it comes up again mm-hmm. for us. And the reason we're talking about it today, we were, uh, searching the web and there was an article on Yahoo Shine uh, the first week in April of 2013 talking about five sneaky health issues that doctors miss but that should be on your radar and the first thing that was listed among those five was sleep apnea. Right. So let's right. talk about sleep and sleep apnea with mm-hmm. a differentiation. And we'll go through each of the five. Yeah. We'll go and th- it's not your, you know, I, ha- I have to say, yeah. doctors are still limited for time. There's limited, I mean, these are things that you have to have a long discussion about. Mm-hmm. So I feel like our talking about it should help you bring it up to your doctor so that they, they don't have not. to keep asking yeah. the questions because there are so many things to do in a very short time that oftentimes they're very centered on your problem. So I don't want to have anybody think we're... <laughs> We're criticizing your doctor by talking about this. Well, We're just trying to help. But also, the, the term is kind of vague. If I say, how, how have you been sleeping, you'll tell me what your pattern is for going to sleep or if you wake up you know, mm-hmm. uh, alertly. In, in their sleep, I mean, when people do sleep studies, one mm-hmm. of the things they find out is they turn over and wake up and open their eyes four or five times a night. And they mm-hmm. go through these, these levels of, of REM sleep, which you're not mm-hmm. necessarily conscious of. Right, you can't uh, tell. But but you need all four. There are four levels, mm-hmm. and you need all four. Right. Uh, and a lot of people don't get to stage three or stage four. Mm-hmm. And that affects their alertness, their energy, their functionality. And we are discovering it also felt, uh, affects the rest of their health. Yeah, it does. It's very, it's very necessary for us to check out uh-huh. for six hours and let our bodies heal. And if you don't wake up, I mean, to me, the, the one key question is, do you wake up feeling refreshed? Or do you wake up going, I have to go back to bed. I don't feel, I don't feel like I slept. Yeah. That's a sign that you're not getting refreshing sleep. And one of the things that they are talking about in, in this article is sleep apnea, which mm-hmm. means you don't know it, but you may be snoring and stopping your breathing. That's the apnea. Ap- apnea means no breathing. Mm-hmm. So you're snoring, snoring, and then all of a sudden you stop. And your, your spouse is like waiting for the next snore. <laughs> yeah, you my, know? my sleep apnea kept my wife awake because she kept thinking I was, gonna, I was right. dying. Yeah, John had, you know? my husband had sleep apnea and I would, you know, I'd, I'd hit his back yeah. to make him wake up enough to breathe, you know. And yeah. finally, he had, he had surgery. There's lots of ways to approach sleep apnea. He had the test and they found it that um, he, his uvula, that little punching bag in the back of your throat was too long and he had it trimmed. Yeah. And pff, stopped and he lost weight. Which is another key thing. Sleep apnea is from usually as we gain weight as we get older, which is one thing I'm trying to stop with increasing testosterone and replacing it, but and making people uh, hormonally whole. Mm-hmm. So one, so that's one of the things. If you can drop 10 pounds, sometimes your sleep apnea test go, you know, gets becomes normal. Well, and that's certainly what happened with me. Yeah. When when I lost, I lost 30 pounds altogether, mm-hmm. but. Uh, when I lost about 10 pounds, my sleep apnea diminished, my snoring diminished. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know any of this. I mean, my wife is reporting this to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and my son, who said, oh, my God, Dad, you snore so bad. Uh, <laughs> you can hear me two rooms away. Uh, and it, they both diminished. Mm-hmm. And so the quality of my rest improved because both those things, wh- what happens when you have the sleep apnea is you don't breathe. And then your brain hits an emergency override for oxygen that forces you to gasp and you know you startle and sometimes it actually wakes you up you, mm-hmm. know, you snort and, mm-hmm. and roll over and look around it's lovely it's, then, that's why you have to oh yeah you always have to sleep with you know somebody that you love because ugh, yeah if they see this as you're getting older it's not very pretty oh. <laughs> yeah. they have to love you to live through it and, and yet you're not conscious of it 
But the other damage the it's other, doing is hypoxia. You don't yes. get enough oxygen to your brain. Yeah. So not only do you feel bad the next day, they've linked this in the recent studies dumber. that shows that they've linked Alzheimer's I'm, and dementia. I'm so much dumber than I used to be. And dementia yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, to sleep apnea, and that's, my daughter's a doctor. She calls me up, Mom, gosh, you know, you snore. I bet you have apnea. You're going to have dementia, and I don't want to have to take care of you. <laughs> I mean, she loves me. I'm a compassionate physician. Take, yeah. No, she is very compassionate. And, but, she, but she's trying for my, she's motivating me. Yeah. And so I got the sleep study. I don't have apnea. So sadly for her, they put all these electrodes over your yeah. brain, or over yeah. your sca scalp, actually. Tie them into your hair and they put things on your legs. You can't really sleep normally because you can't roll very well and you have to sleep like this. <laughs> But it is still a worthwhile test because it could it could save you from having damage to your body because you don't have enough oxygen, damage to your brain. Mm -hmm. Dementia is a good thing to miss, <laughs> yeah. to, to avoid. So all of those things depend on your sleep, and you'll feel better if you get this taken care of. Some people use the... Um, the CPAP machine, which pushes air down into into your lungs, and so you don't wake up and you don't have to gasp, and mm. you get oxygen all mm. night long, which allows you to rest so that you're not suffering from the fatigue, mm -hmm. and it helps address some of the other health-related issues that come when you're not sleeping. But there still is the the corollary of being overweight, because mm -hmm. most of the people that need the CPAPs need it in part because they're obese. And then the next thing is, if you're obese and you can't sleep, it's very hard to lose weight. It's such a vicious cycle. So yeah, it is, and, it, and that's why you have to, at some point, you have to stop that cycle. I usually approach it from the testosterone point of view because testosterone gives you your stage three and four mm -hmm. sleep back. Mm -hmm. So without testosterone in a normal level, you lose that. So you don't wake up rested. So I treat with testosterone. Then I say, how's your sleep? Yeah. And about 80% of people say, it's all better. I'm not, you know, I feel great. Doesn't, but it doesn't stop snoring. And it doesn't stop sleep apnea, and it doesn't, um, and it doesn't stop other things you do to to wake yourself up, like going to the bathroom, and mm -hmm. you know, you're still going to do all of that stuff. It just allows you to get into deep sleep. Well, there also is an element of training and conditioning. You, you need to train your body and your psyche. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's very similar in education. We, we talk to people that, that struggle with being able to do their homework and focus on their grades and all that sort of thing, to not <laughs> do their homework in front of the TV or with the radio playing or the, the you know, switching back and forth on the computer games. You've seen that commercial where the mm -hmm. mom opens the door and says, hi, honey, how are you doing? And he switches, he's got a hot button key to go back to his report, <laughs> yeah, but he's been playing a game. That's not studying. Uh, so, so we teach them, train yourself to have a quiet place that you only do your homework. And you go to that place and you sit down and you do your homework there and not somewhere else or scattered all around. Well, the same thing is true about sleep. You need mm -hmm. to train yourself that sleep is what you do in your bedroom and that you don't watch TV there and you don't eat there uh, and, and you have it dark. Uh, you need drapes or blinds that shut out the outside light. Uh, and you teach yourself that when I go in there, I'm going in there to sleep. Mm -hmm. And initially, that's difficult to do, especially mm -hmm. if you have already have bad habit patterns. I used to do that with middle-aged men that were suddenly single, uh, divorced. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would talk to them about, absolutely do not put a television in your bedroom. I know. Make yourself get up and go in the other room mm -hmm. to, to watch TV. Do not eat in front of the TV set. <laughs> do not eat in front of the, in, in, in the bed. Make yourself get up, go to the dining room table, set a place setting, sit down, eat your meal, clean it mm -hmm. up, go away. Because if you don't discipline yourself to have those patterns, you don't teach your body the signals or the cueing mm -hmm. that say, it's time to sleep. And women always have something to do. So when it, discussing yes. this with women, I have to say, you have to decide on a time of day that you're going to stop yeah. doing the wash, cleaning up the dishes, you know, making an, a list of right. what you're going to do that day. There's got to be a cutoff time. You look at that time, put it, on, now that we have phones, put it on your iPhone that to When the to buzzer ding, goes off, yeah. You're done with the housework. You're done with all, I mean, because now women have jobs and housework, unlike when I grew up. So they have to do it both. Our, so our dryer buzzes. It's never you know, over. Come, come get me, I'm, I'm dry, <laughs> yeah. I'm finished. Uh, I'll tell Phyllis <laughs> to put, put one of those buzzers on her phone to say, shut it all off. You right. Know, go to bed. And then lots of, lots of women, 
respond better to like a, a process, like turn it off, then go take a, a bath that just kind of ch gets you chilled out. With a glass or, of wine yeah, and a small well, candle. Or whatever, just oh. take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Warm water, you know, calms your body down, and then go get to bed and read a very boring book. Mm. I mean, it works. I used to keep Das Kapital next to my bed. <laughs> Uh, because oh, <laughs> the Germanic writing is so turgid, uh, and it'll cross your eyes and put you right to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So those are those are our tricks for sleeping. And and one of the other things, if this if that didn't get you to do something about your poor sleep, then um, listen to the new research. The new research is that you don't make melatonin mm -hmm. if there is light in your room. And melatonin gives us the color of our skin, but it also helps us, it helps us sleep. It's the hormone of sleep. It's also the hormone of weight loss. Yeah. So you can lose weight by sleeping, but you have to have a dark room. So in my world of trying to manage everybody's hormones, making sure they're all balanced, I can do what I can do, but if you're not turning off the TV and if you're not, you don't have a good sleep schedule, and if you don't go to sleep at a certain time and wake up at a certain time, what I'm telling you isn't going to work completely. You'll get halfway better. Well, and, you know, that's a point that I don't think we make often enough on these podcasts. Uh, we, get, we tend to get focused on the medical aspects yeah. and the physiologic aspects mm -hmm. of what's involved in hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is the behavioral aspects. Mm -hmm. and, and I was referencing that in terms of training or conditioning your behaviors and your body to learn your behavior mm -hmm. sequence for going to bed and preparing yourself to go to sleep. But it is also true in terms of managing stress in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you were telling me before we, we began today about a patient that came in and talked to you that when she originally came to you, her physiologic spectrum was all over the board and you got that better. She had three hormones that were out of whack. And I did all of the medical or the hormonal balancing that I could do at the first visit, including replacing her testosterone, she didn't need estrogen yet, and replacing her thyroid and suppressing some of her cortisol. Mm -hmm. I, and because she was very stressed when she came. And she came in uh, recently and she said, this worked perfectly right. for three months. And it's not because the pellets were wearing off because I checked the blood work at three and a half. Mm -hmm. And she said, I had, right before I had my blood work, it all crashed. I just crashed. And I said, that doesn't make sense with the levels you have now. Everything looks good except your cortisol, even though we tried to suppress it, is sky high. It's even worse than it was when you first came to see me. And that usually tells you stress levels are up? That tells me that something happened in her life, usually. Mm -hmm. I've already, I had already reviewed the things in her history in terms of medical things right. and looked at the hormones that stimulate cortisol and all of those were normal. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have a, a, a physical reason for, the, to, cortisol to be for so the cortisol to be high. And usually testosterone brings the cortisol down some. Mm -hmm. So I had done all the things to make it come down, and she was higher. And I said, what happened a month ago? I mean, I couldn't. So in trying to figure out her diagnosis, I was trying to figure out what interfered with this? Did she have a car wreck? Did somebody put her on steroids? What happened? Yeah, or I is mean, there some new physiologic break that we need to discover and right. identify? Right, so I'm looking yeah. for physical reasons, and I said, what happened a month ago? And she said, our family business <laughs> was once run by me and, part, and the rest of the family, and now yeah. it's run by my family and my husband because yeah. I had a, a baby. Yeah. And she's a darling girl. And, I, and she said, and everybody's fighting. And everybody's okay. so unhappy. So she, she has a new baby, and the family is fighting, and the business is in turmoil, and she's feeling responsible for, for well, she's, all of that yeah, in terms she, of internally. fixing it. Because yeah. women always feel, if, the, if you're a guy, we always feel responsible for everything that happens in our families. We're responsible, you know, we have to fix it. We have to get between it. We have to get in there and say, you know, okay, yeah. so we're, we have to, you have to talk to so-and-so, and, you know, we have to be the fix-it people. Right. Then we t internalize it, and we make ourselves sick. And this had just... It had eclipsed all the good things that we had done with her physiology, well, and that does happen. And, and then you go back to your habituation and your conditioning, mm -hmm. because everybody has defense mechanisms that they use to protect themselves from stress and to protect themselves from that kind of, of fluctuating intensity. Mm -hmm. 
And when you're conscious and deliberate, you will do the things that you want to do or have tried to do. But when that gets overridden by a volume of stress, when the cortisol levels go up so high, mm -hmm. you reflexively go back to what you used to do that didn't work. And so if you sleep all the time, that or makes if you no don't sense. Ever Do you realize sleep, how that doesn't make sense? We always reflexively go back to what didn't work. That's right. I mean that you well, know, we do that. Yeah. But I know how that's illogical. It, it, well <laughs> But we are all Ill illogical man, people. Man is a rationalizing animal, not a rational animal. It's a psychological <laughs> concept. Uh, so we rationalize, you know, and, and we make behavior pattern adjustments. So some of us eat, and then we put on weight, and we're mm -hmm. like, well, why am I putting on weight? I don't know what to do, and I'm, I'm not even conscious of how much I'm eating or mm -hmm. what I'm eating. You know, so maybe I make myself feel better by sugar. Mm -hmm. So You're medicating yourself. I'm medicating you myself with M&Ms or alcohol. Girl Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> At this time of yeah. year. Yeah, and, and so you say, well, I'm not really doing anything differently than I have been doing, but you don't even know how much of that stuff you're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's kind of unconscious. And, yeah, and, and it doesn't work. Uh, my wife and I were discussing this yesterday, and we both cope with increased stress levels by distracting ourselves with a project. So yeah, I we love get that. into I some kind that. of a project that can <laughs> that totally absorb our focus. I get lots of things fixed around our house that background. way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't address the stress. No, it doesn't. So, so the point being, there are psychological issues and physiological issues, physiologic issues that need to be somewhat in a zone, somewhat in a balance. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, you can do the things to help them identify and treat the physical things that need tweaking and adjusting. And then you're kind of at a place where you have to say, okay, now that we have this in place, and you're telling me all this about your family and the business and the child and the stress, you need to get some therapy. You yeah. need to go and talk to somebody about how do I learn to have boundaries? How do I learn to say to my relatives, I don't want to be caught in this toxic place, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to play. And I still love you, but I don't want to be hurt by it. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I, uh, in my business over the years, I worked any number of times with uh, family business I mean, it's issues. very common. There's so many family businesses family, the, the that I take The single biggest patients. problem in family businesses is generational transition. You know, if, if I'm the founder of the business and I'm ready now to pass it off to my children and retire, do I really pass it off? Do I surrender control? Do they take control away from me? Mm -hmm. Do they then fight among themselves? And what happens if they don't? And they or don't, their spouses who things don't, don't go well and, after they take it over? Is that whose yeah, fault is that? Yeah. And that ends up being a huge oh, stressor huge. for people. And I don't think yeah. I think they take that for granted. Mm -hmm. They write that off as that's part of my life. Yeah, we're I just going to ride this train to the yeah, end we're of the just, station. We're yeah. just going to have to we're just going to have to live through it, but they're hurting themselves. So I guess one of the things that first of all we've named two things that your doctor probably doesn't bring up because they, he doesn't have twenty minutes or she doesn't have twenty minutes to sit and talk about your life. I mean, we should have that, but we don't. Right. And so so we've talked about sleep, and then we've talked about stress. Stress. Mm -hmm. And what stress really does and it's hard to even in your own mind decide what's going on in your life but you probably should sh uh, cut the conversation short by saying here's what's going in my going on in my life you think that's affecting it cuz they may not know that you may look you're a perfect act actress yes. and you may not look stressed and, and most people don't but you have to, your doctor's not going to go, hey, you look great, but do you have any stress in your life? Well, I exactly, mean, <laughs> if you look great. You know, and, and, you know, so what so many of us have been taught culturally yeah. is fake it till you make it. Yeah. You know, so put that look on your face and push yourself through and say, oh, I'm fine. I mean, right. working with codependents through the Survivors. Years, I used to tell people that the two answers you get to a question of how are you doing that you ask mm -hmm. a codependent. Mm -hmm. First answer is <laughs> fine. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. what They're coming home from their mother's funeral. How are you? Fine. Uh, the second question is... A southern fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't know. Because they don't I know. don't know, yeah. Yeah. And so those are the two answers. And so you have to teach them not to reflexively say fine and to answer the question, what do you know? You know, what can you find to mm -hmm. know? But to, to wrap this up, talking about sleep uh, is how we got into this conversation today. And uh, the, the website referenced a... Uh, a physician, Dr. Lauren Weber, uh, at the mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic Center for Specialized Women's Health. And she's talking about uh, the, the larger category of fatigue mm -hmm. as a, uh, a, 
a signal that mm -hmm. something is really wrong. Mm -hmm. And you can be fatigued because of physical issues. You can be fatigued because of emotional mm -hmm. issues. So she says when, when her patients come in and talk about chronic fatigue, and then that's connected to things like fibromyalgia and autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about in another, another mm -hmm. podcast. Uh, she said she looks at depression, hypothyroidism, vitamin D deficiency, diabetes, and sleep apnea mm -hmm. as triggers that signal increasing levels of fatigue. Mm -hmm. And why is all of this relevant? Because those levels of fatigue, and in particular sleep apnea, mm -hmm. can lead to hypertension, stroke, and heart attack. That's right. All of which are increasingly reported among women over 40. The, mm -hmm. the generational exposure mm -hmm. has skyrocketed mm -hmm. because women's lives are changing. And yeah. one of the reasons that women's lives are changing is because they lose their testosterone. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.